name is Tawana Petty, also known as Honeycomb. The goal was to deepen the thinking around James Boggs' ideas. This was his 100th celebration. Uh, uh, he's a legacy ancestor, left a lineage, and so it was an intergenerational dialogue to connect the, the folks that knew him with the folks that didn't know him but study his work and are carrying on a vision. You know, my takeaway was that we need to keep having these conversations, that there is so much connected to what's happening today with what the way Jimmy was thinking back in the 60s even, 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, before he passed on and joined the ancestors. Uh, one of the things he said was the fundamental contradiction was the underdevelopment of humans and the overdevelopment of technology. And so in the age of facial recognition, in the age of surveillance, in the age of uh, economics of fear, and like how um, safety has been conflated with security and those sorts of things. Like I think Jimmy would be very vocal in this work today and some of the stuff that's happening and some of the dialogues that we were having. So, now we can start. Uh, so my name is Rich Feldman, and I work with the James Gracely Box Center on the board for that's a long time. And um, on behalf of the James and Gracely Box Center for Nurture Community Leadership, we're really, really honored you're here. And I'd like you all to say out loud, James and Gracely Box Center for Nurture Community Leadership. James and Gracely Box Center to Nurture Community Leadership. It's not because I want to indoctrinate you. It's because most folks who are under 65 only know Grace. And it's called the Grace Box Center, not the James and Grace. And part of the reason that we're doing this is to bring back their unity and their relationship, even, we, even though we know they're both individuals. And obviously, Thank you. And because Grace lived, Jimmy died in 1993, and Grace lived till 2015. That's a lot of years for her to redefine and define her own journey, as well as her relationship with Jimmy. And now as a center, part of our transition was to bring forth this JV100 gathering. Um, so how many of you were here on Sunday for the film and the, the larger gathering? A number? Okay, it was an amazing turnout at the museum. Um, and this commitment today is, is really based on the importance of ideas and serious study. Uh, Aneb um, has been one of the people that has always said we need to study seriously and we need to have serious conversations. And that the t-shirt, whoever's wearing a Jimmy Boggs t-shirt today says, what does it say? I believe ideas are life and death questions, and we need to struggle over them. So it's really about the importance of ideas that come from practice and theory and creating new theory. So I just wanted to welcome folks on behalf, and we really hope that you get to both know each other you get to really think about some of the questions and the conversation that will be taking place today. And this becomes just another launching pad for serious investigation, serious study about the relationship of Jimmy and Grace, Jimmy's evolution in terms of his ideas. And at this point, I wanted to bring up the Detroit summer folks to do a little icebreaker. And then we'll go into the context of why we're here uh, more in depth and go over the logistics for, for, for the day. Um, but we really, really welcome everybody here and, and uh, hopefully you'll get to know each other because it's a long, long journey. Okay.
We're gonna do an icebreaker, um, rock, paper, rock, paper, rock, paper, scissors. So everybody is going to play rock, paper, scissors with a partner. If you lose, you become that first person's entourage and like cheer them on, and you keep doing that until there's two people left. Yeah. You ready? Everybody understand the directions? No. No. That's serious. Okay. What is it? Not too much. So, yeah. Um, if you move from rock paper scissors, rock paper scissors shoot. Right, and then and they would go around and cheer on uh, Athena while she plays more people in my paper scissors. Wow. Right, and then it gets down to the last two people who play, and you know there's gonna be a crowd behind each of one of them cheering them on to see who wins it all. Okay, you ready? Okay, three, two, one, and go. Cool. My name is Dakari Carter. I'm a uh, on the board of the Bog Center and uh, one of the lead organizers for Detroit Summer. Today, uh, a lot of stuff happened, a lot of learning, a lot of very deep and intentional conversations, and um, just a lot of exploring of the ideas and the philosophy of James Boggs. And um, yeah, it was great to just see people and to just really get a chance to, you know, talk and debate and think about these ideas. Um, for me, it was enlightening. I think I learned a lot about um, what it means to be in a beloved community and what it means uh, when we say new work, new culture. And I think one of my favorite parts was at the uh, very end, one of the last sessions, we got a chance to envision um, uh, to envision Detroit uh, in 2050 and what do we want to see for our future and what do we want to build for our future. And so that was one of my favorite parts. Okay. So we are here this morning for the Steady In Teach Out, which is part of JD100, as you know. To get us um, situated in this particular activity as part of this week, as part of the water, Work that rich reference and welcome. Uh, I'd like to ask you to please write, take out something you can write on, a piece of paper. Or your phone. Give it a recipe. Please write down the year in which you were born. You might have to share with people though. <laughs> Next to that, please write down something that happened, an event, or something that was happening or involving some development in that year. And if you can think of something in that year, specifically or something around that time. This could be something that has of some historical significance in Detroit or where you're from or the country or the world, something that, that shaped the world at that time, or something related to you that, that shaped your engagement with the world. It's not an individual, you can talk to people if you want to help you think of. Some people have a great memory of Okay, everybody have something? I see a few people still working. You know that oh. 
Okay, next. Please write down this year, 2019, and identify something. An event that has happened, or will be happening, or some development that you think is of historical significance for the country, for the city, the country, the world, or for yourself and your engagement with the city, the country, the world, or the world now. And I'm saying one thing, but if you have many things, please write whatever comes to mind, as many things that come to mind. Okay, the last part of this exercise, please, please write down the year which would be 100 years after your birth. And not now, but at some point throughout the day, please write down something next to that number that reflects what you think could be, should be, will be, happening in that year. So not now, but over the course of the day, please do that. So we're starting with that to get a sense of um, historical time. As we said, we're here, we're here for James Bond's 100th centenary. He's not lived to be 100, as Rich mentioned, Grace lived to be 100. Jimmy passed away in 1993 at the age of 74. Uh, but we were here celebrating what would have been his 100th birthday, and not just celebrating it, but using it as an occasion to think about what he did and thought, how he did it and how he thought, and how that can contribute to our thinking and acting today. And in particular, um, this exercise points to one of the hallmarks of Jimmy's thinking, which is how he thought historically. And when I say thinking historically, I, I don't mean just memorizing names and dates or knowing what happened at a certain time, but historical development. Recognizing that the society we live in has been created by the things that people did and struggled over in previous times, and the ideas which shape or govern or propel those actions and those struggles. And having that inform how we understand today, engage today, and then try to create the future. So that concept, that idea of thinking historically was related to his, his and Grace's notion of thinking dialectically, which is by which they meant that we have to recognize that. Reality is constantly changing, and therefore our framing of reality, the ideas by which we, we engage reality, need to change. Because ideas which were useful, progressive, appropriate at one point, may not be, in fact probably won't be at another point, because things have changed. But if we're staying stuck in those concepts, if we continue to live and act by those ideas, then not only will they not be as appropriate and useful as they were, but they can become their opposite. They can hold us back. They can cause us not to be able to see and advance humanity, which they came to see as the goal of um, revolutionary action. So that's one hallmark of this thinking, of, to think historically and think dialectically. A second one, an important hallmark of this thinking, was the importance of ideas, the importance of study and in particular in relation to, to practice. So we can think of it as a process of, of study, of developing ideas, engaging in practice and the struggles, guided by those ideas, and reflecting on what we learn from those struggles. Whether they are successful or not, or not even, or, or in the victories or not, learning from them. So a process of study, um, practice, and reflection, all great process. So that would be a second hallmark of his thinking. And the third hallmark of his thinking 
would be that we all have the capacity to grow. And because we have the capacity to grow, we have the capacity to conceptualize and act toward shaping our society. And we don't have to have prestige or status or degrees or other um, um, markers to indicate that. All of us have the capacity to grow and all of us have the capacity to change the society. And in fact, we should, the highest form of that is to take responsibility for changing the society in the way that you have been about it. So we'll go through all more, speaking dialectically and historically, the process of study, practice, reflection, and third, the capacity to grow and to shape our society. And that particularly includes the young people, recognizing that young people had a particular, that they should not be seen as um, small humans ready to be full humans, but they are themselves complete human beings who have the capacity to engage the society and reshape. Hi, my name is Dominic Sweeney. I'm with uh, Detroit Action Commonwealth. Uh, today was another reminder of like the importance of what the Bog Center does on a daily basis. Um, the importance of coming together in conversation with people to critically examine um, why it is we do what we are doing. Um, and ultimately, um, I think the largest phrase that I could use is um, the idea of James and Grace Lee Boggs that um, what we're fundamentally called to do is to become more human human beings. Um, and a fundamental part of that is being in conversation with other people. Um. At the same time, when this racial chair, represented by the Ku Klux Klan and mentioned racialized violence, he also was shaped by the nurturing environment of his family and his community. And those twin or, or parallel experiences are part of the foundation upon his life. So he went to high school in Bessemer, Alabama. Upon graduating in 1937, he came to Detroit in search of work in the oil factories. Didn't initially find it, but he left, came back. By 1940, he was working in the factories. And that's when his political uh, and intellectual development, well, his intellectual development was already taking place, but his direct political involvement took place in the context of the unions and the UAW in the 1940s. And this is the moment after the creation of the UAW and the CIO in the mid-1930s. So still some of the radical ideas from the labor movement uh, and the Marxist movement, which he was engaged in, or some of the, the um, spaces of his intellectual political activity. This led to him meeting Grace in the early 50s, and they were married in 1954, uh, initiating their four decades of struggle and love uh, and activism and thought together. And over the course of that period, he was involved in a range of organizations, a range of struggles, and developed a, a series of ideas, which are reflected in the reader, reflected in some of the things that we were studying today, um, and we have been studying, and hope to continue to study. And his, one way that he conceptualized his life and his political engagement was saying that he lived through three periods. Does anyone remember that from yesterday? So Jimmy said that he lived through three periods. Industry, industrialization, and automation. And those words reflect these broad historical processes. And the point is not that he's unique, because there are many other people living through those eras, of course, at the same time. Um, not that he just doesn't have lived through them. But the point is that he recognized that these big changes, changes in our economic structure, which related to changes in, in um, where and how people related, related to each other, related to technological developments, related to how people fought and struggled, he lived through these changes. And that reflects that sense of historical thinking. Uh, and by agriculture, he means growing up in the rural south. By energy, he means coming to Detroit and being part of the auto, auto industry, the labor movement. Um, Detroit, as it was ascending to its, uh, as it was growing the population and economy and so forth, uh, and by automation, he means what we come to call uh, post-industrial, or that's a decline of the auto industry, not the auto industry only, but decline of manufacturing, of the large industrial base, um, and all the things that have come with that, including the violence associated with po poverty, depopulation, the crack epidemic, and so forth.
So his various writings, speeches, organizations reflect his experiences living through those moments, through those periods, and his conceptualization, conceptualization of them is not just social changes, but as broad uh, historical changes, broad inquiries, new ideas, and new concepts. And so I'll close with two quotes, two statements he made at the end of his life, which reflect the statement that they wrote for us and others, other things he's written, about how he saw himself historically, about how he engaged in the process of study, practice, reflection, and how he conceptualized and acted on his own capacity to grow and be part of broader transformation. So the first one we last two was from 1992, it's not in the reading. Um, is in an essay, I'm sorry, a new article on Trey Lewis with Commission Sunday by Jordan Dawson, which is a profile on Jimmy a year before he passed when he was ill, called American Revolutionary. And then he said that, that um, his, his ideology is constantly changing, with one constant, it must advance humanity. That's 1992. The next year, just a couple of months before his passing, he made this statement, or the statement of the president of the state, which Rich also had us go through. So at the very end of his life, he was saying that ideas matter. Having been a union activist, having been a civil rights or black power activist, having been part of these various organizations and struggles and movements, he still firmly believed that ideas were important and the people that are struggling. So this morning, and this afternoon, we today, together, can struggle over ideas.